This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for March 7, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, mother and a son who perished in Westmoreland fire identified. A mother and her son who died in a fire that destroyed their home in Berkshire District, Westmoreland, on Monday have been identified. They are 38-year-old Keisha Walters, a hairdresser, and a 5-year-old Joel Brown. Reports from the Bethel Town Police are that, about 11 p.m., residents saw fire coming from a section of the house and alerted the police and the fire department. The charred remains of the mother and the son were discovered among the rubble following cooling down operations. The scene was processed and the remains removed to the morgue. The cause of the fire is not yet known. A pickers attacked and shot in St. Catherine. Two of three men who attempted to pick Akis from an open lot in Tarzan District in Caymanus Bay, St. Catherine, on Monday were attacked, shot, and chopped. The men, who have since been admitted to hospital, were attacked after they disobeyed a request not to pick the fruit. It was reported that around 10.35 a.m., the three went to pick Akis on the heavily vegetated open lot. While there, they were approached by a man who told them they could not take any of the fruits. Police said an argument developed between both parties, during which the man went away and later returned with five other men in a motor car and a pickup truck. The men, who were armed with machetes and a shotgun, attacked the Aki pickers. One of the men managed to flee and escape. Another received shotgun wounds to his back, while the third was chopped in his left eye and left shoulder. They eventually managed to run from the bushes and were assisted by the police to hospital, where they were treated and admitted. Fire destroys four businesses in Portland. Four shops were mysteriously gutted by fire in the Fairy Hill community in eastern Portland on Tuesday morning. It took firefighters more than two hours to contain the blaze that destroyed the livelihoods of four business operators. Firefighters from Port Antonio say that they responded to a call about 4 a.m. However, when they arrived on the scene, fire had already engulfed the buildings, which were close to each other. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Yesterday, residents of the community had staged a protest and blocked the roads over a dust nuisance, the road conditions, and the lack of water. Manchester teachers stage a wage protest. Classes at several institutions across Manchester were disrupted this morning after teachers staged sick outs and a peaceful protest of the wage offer made by the government. Placard-bearing teachers stood outside the gates of Manchester High School in Mandeville this morning for an hour, declaring their unwillingness to accept a remuneration package that cannot sustain them in the current economic climate. Contact teacher at the institution, Shelley and Bruce Reed, said teachers deserve much more than the government is offering and they will continue to reject the proposals if they remain unfavorable. We won't be disrupting classes today. We are just sending a message to the government to let them know that we, the teachers of Manchester High School, are not pleased with what we are getting and we would like them to know that we will be rejecting the offer that has been put on the table. While classes at the institution were still held, schools such as Mandeville Primary and the Winston Jones High had a number of students returning home as much more than half of the teaching staff did not show up. According to reports, only five of the 48 teachers at Winston Jones High School showed up for school. Principal of Mandeville Primary School Howard Salmon said only 29% of the teachers were present this morning. He said, however, that students who attended school were still accommodated online and face-to-face. -face. The government in December started the implementation of the Public Sector Compensation Review to overhaul the structure of salaries in the public service. However, teachers believe that a greater percentage of the budget should go towards an increase in salaries for them, despite warnings that payments cannot be made from the 2023 to 2024 budget should workers miss the March deadline to settle, teachers remain resolute in their decision to lobby for more. Portmore teachers vote to reject a salary increase offer. Members of the Portmore District of the Jamaica Teachers Association voted on Monday to reject the government's wage offer for members of the profession. 
Of the 111 teachers present, 110 voted to reject the offer and only one voted to accept. JT President Lysandra Harrison had previously stated that the association's decision on the government's offer will be delivered tomorrow, March 8, when teacher delegates will cast their vote. Police probing three shooting incidents in Port Moore. Police in Port Moore St. Catherine were kept busy between last night and this morning, probing at least three shooting scenes in the municipality. Two men were shot, one fatally in Watson Grove, Gregory Park at 9 p.m. Two others were shot and injured in Reed's Pen about 9.20 p.m. And another man was gunned down on Port Henderson Road about 1.20 a.m. The police say they do not think the crimes are related. Black man and Maga man found guilty of another murder. Andre Blackman Bryan and his henchman Ted Prince have been found guilty of another murder in the ongoing trial of 26 alleged members of the Klansman gang. Chief Justice Brian Sachs handed down the verdict on Tuesday at the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston. Brian, who Sachs declared to be the leader of the gang, and Ted Prince had been accused of facilitating the murder of an unknown male, count 19 on the 25-count indictment at the Phil's Hardware store in Spanish Town St. Catherine in 2018. The trial judge said, based on the evidence, he was satisfied that Brian had issued the instructions and that Prince had acted on them. Prince, otherwise called a MAGA man, had insisted that he is merely a shoemaker and a construction site worker. Count 19 had originally charged Brian, Prince and Lamar Simpson with the murder. However, the Crown conceded in respect of the case against the Simpson, who the judge on Monday declared not guilty. Sykes has been dishing guilty verdicts since last week in the Marathon trial. Brian has been found guilty in several murders, including the killing of a St. Catherine couple in 2017 during a search for a rival gangster called Bubba Sparks and the 2017 murder of the main forester, also known as Dooley, at Price Wright Meadowbrook in St. Andrew. Quick Action Limits Fire Damage at Lucy Supermarket Quick action by bus operators in Lucy Hanover this morning saved the owners of a supermarket in the town from losing millions of dollars worth of goods to a fire. The fire, which started at about 4.40 a.m., caused the minor damage to a small office upstairs at the building. When I saw what was happening, I alerted another bus driver who drove to the fire station, which is in close proximity, and they responded as quickly as possible, a driver who was on the scene told the news. He said within 20 minutes of learning of the fire, the firefighters were in the cooling down process. The business operators were extremely lucky, he concluded. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.